All right, so it's a mess. It's a mess in politics at the moment. And, of course, we're not talking about a poll which showed that a national, if an election had been held when the poll was held, uh, we could have a National Act government. And also, I guess, the thing, the shine that's been taken off is that uh, the Act Party was up four percentage points to, I think, 11 or 12. Uh, Labor had dropped two, National had dropped two, but when you put it in context, it's like a third increase in support for the old Act Party. Uh, they did better than any other party in the polls. So I thought it might be worth getting their party leader, David Seymour, in this morning to ask why and figure out what he's doing right. David, welcome uh, to the platform again. That's a good poll result, mate. Oh, well, thank you, Sean. Um, these polls come and go, so we don't want to put yeah. too much weight in it. But we are pleased to see that, you know, just over one in ten New Zealanders are saying if there's an election now, they would back act. Uh, and uh, we see a lot of responsibility to deliver for them. So you know, it's, 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 it's good times, but it's also, you know, tough times ahead. What do you think got you that? Because, you know, we, there'd been a bit of horse trading uh, with National. They went up, you went down. Uh, how do you think you've connected with those extra people? Well, i, I tell you what, what we've been doing. First of all, we're, we're always on the road. So, you know, over the parliamentary recess, the parliament shut down for three weeks, thank God. No damage done there. Uh, and uh, we got out and uh, went and did, I think, about 15 uh, meetings over just over two weeks. Um, we spoke to 2,500 people um, and listened to 2,500 people in that process. Uh, and then, you know, at the same time, uh, we've been putting out a lot of ideas. The only party that's put out a fully costed alternative budget saying if we have the Treasury benches, here's how much we'd tax, here's how much we'd spend, here's how we'd balance the budget. Uh, and then we put out another paper saying, look, here's, here's nine simple ideas the government could be doing right now to get the cost of living under control. Next week we'll do the same thing on crime. So it's getting out listening, hearing people's concerns and uh, putting forward ideas that we think might solve them. Uh, and you know, not, not everyone agrees with all our ideas, but I think it's our job to at least be putting stuff out there. You also have no one who's been caught schoolyard bullying or be mean to their flatmate. Well, that's always helpful in politics. Um, I just, you know, hope that for all the people involved, all of that business gets resolved because none of it is going to help solve any of those problems that no. people are telling us no, about. No, they're not. No, it's not going to. It's not going to sort out crime. It's not going to sort out the cost of living, and it's certainly not going to stop our drift towards co-government. Yeah. Despite your fresh face, young looks, you've been around politics for a while now. I still look at stories like this and things like this and think there are no winners, David. It's petty and it's silly and it feels unclean. Yep, and you know there'll be different people involved that have totally different perspectives uh, and you know, it may be quite real for them. So I'm pretty hesitant to comment because I don't know any of the people involved. No. I don't know any of the facts. I think our country has a bit of a national obsession with uh, opinionating on <laughs> cases we don't know anything about. Uh, you know, I mean, this David Bain thing, I meet people that are absolutely certain one way or the other. Um, <laughs> yeah, but come saying, on, well, the mate, latest thing, there. Sam Uffendall's not a mass killer. He's not a potential mass killer. Uh, he well, may no, have, be, he may mean, have been mean to a fat flatmate. Obviously, we're not comparing the the yeah. crimes, but I'm just making the point that sometimes people um, have opinions that go beyond how much they know yeah, yeah. about the case. Yeah, and yeah. That's why well, I'm well, what to we do it. know, what we do know about this case, David, and I look, I'm going to postulate that one of the reasons I think you're doing better is I think your party has been disciplined and also principled. You have taken stands on issues of liberty and freedom of speech and very strong. And I would say uncompromising stance on those things, sometimes against, if you like, the pol political current or fashion of the day. And I, I personally believe that's one of the reasons you're reaping uh, those dividends or benefits in your political support. What do you think in principle of a caucus member being stood down on the basis of an anonymous allegation from an outfit like RNZ what do you think of someone being stood down ahead of a so-called QC's probe or investigation into the possibility they were mean to a flatmate? 
Would you do that to well, one of your caucus members? No. I, I mean, look, if I was in the same situation, I would acknowledge the complaint and I might acknowledge the need to get in an independent investigation. And ACTS did have to do that uh, a couple of years ago when there were some allegations against other members of our youth wing. So, and you've got to remember, this is something that just about every business faces now. If you're in business and you get an accusation like this in your organisation, uh, you end up having to get you know, an expensive lawyer in to write a report and establish the facts on the balance of probability. Um, now, I think that that is you know, a, a shame in some ways because if you have to pay for it, uh, it's probably also a sign that our society's become a, a safer place that's more worried about people's welfare. Would you have stepped them down um, during that period? Um, I, I don't. Once again, I don't know everything that Chris knows, so I, I couldn't judge his decision. But hypothetically, we we wouldn't do it that way. Is there a sensitivity? Do you think to the female vote this election, and to the middle ground swinging female voter? Does that give the Me Too madness some extra political heft? Look, I think every decent society uh, is respectful of women. Uh, I think actually. If you ever want to find out what a country is like, uh, you can do this exercise. Go to the Rough Guide or the Lonely Planet back when it was a book. Um, and there used to be a section that said, is this a safe place for women to go out at night? Uh, and I remember when I was thinking about going and traveling in many places I still haven't been to. And I always found it interesting at the end of a section uh, they'd say whether or not this was a safe place for women to go out at night, and, and I think you can, I think you can judge a society uh, to some extent on that. Mm. Whether the Me Too and some of the stuff that's gone on recently in New Zealand has taken that over the top's another issue, but it, it's not a bad point. Yeah, but look what we've done. Look what we've done, David. We're here talking about women's rights and may, women maybe being raped when they're out. All we've got is an anonymous person who says she was his flatmate. He banged on her door and called her a fatty. See how these things, how, how an irresponsible media can blow these things out of all proportion. Yeah, and uh, again, I, I don't know all the facts that Chris Luxon has in front of him and I'm, I'm hesitant to put myself in his shoes and say what he should be doing. But, uh, you know, hypothetically, based on what you've told, what you've told me, if it was me, um, I'd be saying, look, you know, we've got a loyalty to our employee uh, we've got an obligation to people who have made a complaint. Uh, would you have to pay a lawyer to do an investigation on the balance of probabilities? Probably. Would you stand them down in the meantime? Probably not. Um, so you know, slightly different, but I just acknowledge what people in business face in these situations all the time. A lot of lawyers make a lot of money out of it. All right. Let's get back to that poll and the strategy. You say you're going to be doing some work on crime in particular in the next wee while? Yeah, absolutely, because, look, it's been, what, four months since the uh, government declared war on ram raiders. Yeah. And we were asking the questions in Parliament yesterday, well, how many uh, ram raids have there been? How many uh, suspects have you identified? How many of them have you arrested? And what have you done with them? Have you just taken them home to their parents so they go out and commit another one? And the Prime Minister got extremely angry with me for asking these questions. She seemed to be offended by the idea that she should know such things, and she started shouting at me that there's been hundreds of arrests, how could she possibly know? Well, um, actually, I would say it's one of the major issues affecting New Zealanders right now. Six ram raids in one night. A guy out in St Helier's Auckland who had a heart attack as a result of one. I visited three ram raided businesses this weekend while I was home from Parliament uh, in the Epsom electorate alone. Uh, and Minister doesn't know the answer to basic questions. So, so we'll be talking about that, uh, the gangs and other issues around crime. Because, again, we think it's our job to put out new ideas so that voters can judge on the ideas. And once you start doing that, you spend less time judging on the personalities and whose flatmate was angry with them 20 yeah. years ago. Have you asked your caucus, though, David, or will you be asking your caucus any skeletons in the, in the closet? Did they poke their tongue out at someone at primary school or call them a bad I would, name? I, would, I, would, I, I wouldn't be surprised if some of my 
caucus and poke their tongue out at primary school. Um, <laughs> some of them were certain they would have. But um, look, in terms of our process, you know, I'm a member of the board. Uh, the board interviews them. Uh, we're very clear if there's anything you need to tell us, tell us now because it'll be much simpler than later. Uh, and um, I, have a, I actually have a policy with my caucus. I've told them I'm like a parent of teenagers. You can call me at 3 a.m. and I'll come and get you. Um, so, you know, they have an open line policy to me. Um, if they haven't taken advantage of that in the last two years, that's on them. All right. And so far, so far... Uh, none of them have fallen, and I still think if you can get through a whole term, David, that's going to be some sort of a political record. All right, 11 12% right now in the polls. Is there more in you, or is that peak, um, is that peak act a year out from an election? Well, remember, um, you know, we, we polled at um, 18% at the end of last year. Mm. So that's almost one in five New Zealanders who have gone all the way along the journey to say, actually, I don't just not just know who they are, I'm not just interested, I don't just like them, or actually, I'd, I'd vote for them if I got the choice. Um, so, you know, is that peak act? I don't know, but I do know that uh, there's no limit. We can go higher, uh, and I think it's actually essential that we do because, frankly, this country is not in a business-as-usual phase. It's not 2006 or 2016 when stuff was just okay and going along. Uh, we got serious problems. Our productivity, this cost of living crisis is worse in New Zealand because we started off poor. Uh, you know, we've got a crime issue, which is just out of control. If I wanted to live in LA, I would. Uh, and th thirdly, and perhaps most fundamental, uh, we've got this idea of co-government where there are two sources of sovereignty and power in New Zealand. And if you live in Christchurch or you live in Canterbury, uh, then you get one vote as a citizen. And if you happen to be a member of Naitahu, you get an extra, extra vote. Now, this cannot stand. This will be the end of the liberal, democratic, tolerant society we know and love. And I think that is an issue. That issue in particular, David, is another reason you've done well lately. But you've got growing competition on that issue. And I note that Winston Peters, New Zealand... First, uh, up on 2%, and, and Winston's been on my program saying he is back. He is back for next year's election. And I would see uh, his policy platform and his political positioning as being very much in the same space as you. Do you re recognise New Zealand First as a possible limiter on the success of ACT? Well, the only thing I'd say is, first of all, you, you can't trust them. And second of all, uh, you know, we're all about you. He's all about himself. So what are the three possibilities uh, if New Zealand first get your vote? Well, one is that they won't get to 5%. I think that's probably still most likely. Uh, that wasted vote could be the difference between us winning and Labour Green Maori getting in. So it's a big risk. Second of all, maybe they do get to 5%. Uh, and people say, oh, they'll never go with Labour again. Really? Well, actually... Actually, I asked with Winston that question, them. he wouldn't rule it out. Exactly. Yep, they'll go with whoever gives them the nicest limo. The other possibility is that they end up with us, and instead of having two parties you know, executing a coherent program to try and fix this place, uh, you'll end up with everything being all about you-know-who. Uh, and you know, that it will just make it impossible even winning to, to get any progress. So um, all, all together, you've got three possibilities. Two of them involve the Labor government and one of them involves standing still. And I just think after everything he's done, I'm not sure why you'd want to give him a chance. All right. Well, given your vast years of experience, uh, David Seymour, what would your advice be to... And I've already said if I was him, I'd just go home to Tauranga and say uh, a pox on Luxon and the rest of them. What would you do this morning if you were Sam Uffendal? Oh, <laughs> tough questions this morning. Uh, look, I would go home and talk to the people that were important to me. I would seriously consider not just politics but all aspects of my life and decide what was most important for me to do. Um, I guess one of the things that he'd want to ask himself is why did I want to be in politics? What did I want to achieve? Um, I didn't see his maiden statement, but, um, you know, if he if he can't think of a good reason to stay in politics, uh, he, he should uh, get out. Um, maybe he has a purpose that, that's uh, escaped me, but, um, you know, I suspect that probably uh, if, he, if he hasn't come to Wellington to achieve anything, then he's probably easier not to be here.
Uh, David, I thank you very much indeed for your time. I'm sure you'll talk to us if you crash at the next poll. You'll be just as willing to Look, come forward and, and talk about what went wrong. Well, I'll tell you something, Sean. We, 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 as I mentioned, we did our tour of uh, two and a half thousand people uh, came to, to you know, 15 events up and down, literally from Invercargill to Cambridge and Auckland, actually. Uh, and um, I asked people a lot of questions because I wasn't interested in what people say. So I said, you know, where do people get information? Um, I said, you know, uh, other media outlets. I said, and I said, is there any outlets I forgot? And people said, the platform. So for every subsequent meeting, I asked how many people get information from the platform, and I'd say about a quarter of the people were putting their hand up. So good on you guys. Uh, you know, you haven't been around very long, and I know what it's like to be a minor player fighting their way up, and I think you guys are doing great. Thank you very much indeed, David. Of course you're going to get a good editorial now. That is David Seymour, leader of the ACT Party. The party that did the best in the last political poll. Yeah, that political poll you're not talking about because the Labour trolls... And uh, the misandrists uh, dancing uh, maybe prematurely on Sam Uffendall's uh, grave.